Did you know that the fate of your garden's harvest depends on one magical process? Without it, your tomatoes wouldn't ripen, your squash will wither, and your garden dreams might crumble. That process, pollination. Let's uncover the secrets of pollination and cross-pollination to make your garden thrive like never before. Pollination is the heartbeat of any thriving garden. It's the bridge between your plants, flowers, and their fruits. Whether you're a seasoned grower or just starting out, understanding the science and heart of pollination can elevate your gardening success. Today, we'll explore how pollination works, why it sometimes fails, and what you can do to boost it in your garden oasis. What is pollination? Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the male part of the flower, which is the anther, to the female part, stigma. This is what allows plants to produce fruits and seeds. Without pollination, your garden won't bear the fruits of your labor, literally. While some plants self-pollinate like tomatoes and lettuce, Others need help from wind, water, or most importantly, pollinators, or you can self-pollinate. Pollinators are nature's gardeners. Bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, and even bats help transform pollen between flowers. They are drawn to gardens with vibrant blooms and fragrant scents, making flowers not just a decorative addition, but an essential one. Bees are champions in the garden. They are crucial for pollinating vegetables like squash and beans. Butterflies with their long tongues are perfect for deep flowers like hibiscus. Hummingbirds with their tiny wonders love tubular flowers and also visit plants like okra. Attract pollinators by planting flowers such as marigolds, lantana, and sunflowers alongside your vegetables. What is cross-pollination? Cross-pollination occurs when pollen from one plant fertilizes another plant of the same species. This process introduces genetic diversity, leading to healthier plants and often larger yields. For example, your squash plants will yield better fruit if bees carry pollen between different squash plants. Cross-pollination is key for crops like apples and peppers to ensure genetic variety. How about a mythbuster? While cross-pollinating enhances diversity, it doesn't affect the immediate fruit of a plant. It impacts the seeds. Why pollination sometimes fails? Pollination isn't always a given, and failures can stem from several issues. Urbanization, pesticide use, and habitat loss pose significant challenges to pollinator populations. However, you can take specific steps to encourage pollinators to visit your garden oasis and support their survival. Here's what you can do. You can plant a pollinator-friendly garden, grow native plants, native flowers, or naturally suited to local pollinators, Consider species like milkweed, coneflowers, and wildflowers for your region. Ensure continuous blooms. Plant a variety of flowers that bloom at different times throughout the growing season to provide a consistent food source. Include diverse flower shapes and colors. Different pollinators prefer specific flower types. Bees like open, flat flowers 
while hummingbirds are drawn to tubular blooms. Avoid pesticides, opt for organic gardening practices to minimize harm to pollinators. If pest control is necessary, use natural deterrents like neem oil or companion planting to reduce pest populations without toxic chemicals. Provide a habitat. You can create nesting sites by leaving bare soil patches for ground nesting bees or installing bee hotels for solitary bees. Had logs, rocks, or undisturbed areas for pollinators to shelter in and lay eggs. Offer fresh water. Set up shallow water dishes with stones or floating items to give pollinators a safe place to drink. Ensure the water is clean and place in shaded areas to keep it cool. You can incorporate herbs. Pollinators love herbs like thyme, mint, lavender, and basil, especially when they flower. Let some herbs go to bloom to attract bees and butterflies. Plant pollinated trees and shrubs. Larger plants like butterfly bushes, fruit trees, or flowing hedges provide additional food and shelter for pollinators. Advocate for pollinators beyond your garden. You can join or support local efforts to create pollinator corridors in urban areas. Educate neighbors and friends about the importance of pollinators and encourage them to avoid harmful practices like excessive pesticide use. By creating a welcoming environment for pollinators, your garden will flourish while helping vital species thrive despite urban challenges. These efforts not only beautify your, o your oasis, but also contribute to a healthier ecosystem overall. In poor weather, rain or high winds can prevent pollinators from visiting your garden. When poor weather like rain or high winds keep pollinators away, there are steps you can take to support them and encourage their return once the weather improves. You can create shelter by installing windbreaks such as, such as hedges, fences, or tall plants to support a calmer environment for pollinators. Had bee hotels or insect houses to give solitary bees and other beneficial insects a safe place to wait out storms. Incorporate dense shrubs or plants with large leaves to offer protection for pollinators during windy or rainy conditions. Provide food sources. Plant early blooming flowers that are resilient to poor weather. Ensuring nectar and pollen are available as soon as pollinators can venture out. Include a variety of native plants to attract local pollinators once conditions improve. You can offer supplemental feeders. Use hummingbird feeders with sugar water solution or create a shallow dish with sugar water or diluted honey to temporarily provide energy to pollinators. Ensure they have access to water. You can provide shallow water sources with stones or floating objects so pollinators can safely drink without risk of drowning. Adapt your gardening practices. Choose plants with tubular or protected flowers that can still own nectar even during rain, such as nasturtiums or foxgloves. Keep flowering herbs like thyme and mint, which are fragrant and attractive to pollinators. And your timing matters. Perform gardening activities like watering and pest control early in the morning or late in the evening when pollinators are less active. Keep pollinator friendly spaces year round. You can maintain a variety of blooms throughout the growing season to give pollinators plenty of options when weather clears. These practices not only help pollinators endure challenging weather, but also ensure they return to your garden, supporting pollination and boosting your garden's productivity. Companion planting is a natural gardening technique 
that involves strategically growing certain plants together to enhance their growth, repel pests, and improve soil health. In my garden, I cultivate a variety of vegetables, herbs, and flowers, and companion planting helps them thrive. Tomatoes pair well with basil and marigolds, as marigolds repel nematodes and other pests, while basil enhances flavor and deters flies. Garlic and onions planted near peppers and lettuce help to ward off aphids and slugs. Beans benefit squash and corn by fixing nitrogen in the soil, creating a fertile environment. Sunflowers attract pollinators and act as natural trellises for climbing plants like beans. Herbs such as sage, thyme, and mint deter common garden pests. While their aromatic properties benefit crops like bok choy and spinach. Flowers like hibiscus and roses add biodiversity and attract beneficial insects. Raspberries thrive when growing alongside marigolds, which deter beetles, and nearby corn can shield delicate plants from wind. This symphony of plants supports each other, promoting the balanced, thriving ecosystem in my garden oasis. Here's a pro tip. Hand pollinate, if necessary, by using a small brush to transfer pollen between flowers. Here are some practical tips to boost pollination. Diversify your garden. How do we do that? By introducing a mix of flowers and vegetables that attracts a broader range of pollinators. In my garden, the lantana and marigolds are constant pollinator magnets. Another tip is to avoid pesticides. Even organic pesticides can deter pollinators. Use companion planting as a natural pest deterrent instead. Another tip is you can create pollinator habitats. You can do so by probably installing a bee house or leave a small patch of wildflowers to invite pollinators into your garden. And of course the hand pollination hack where for plants like tomatoes and squash you gently shake the flowers or use a small paintbrush to mimic the work of bees. Some plants like tomatoes and lettuce don't require external pollination. This is known as self-pollination, where flowers fertilize themselves. While convenient self-pollinating plants can still benefit from a light breeze or handshaking to distribute pollen more effectively. What's happening in my garden? In my garden oasis, I grow a diverse mix of plants, tomatoes, eggplants, squash, hibiscus, to name a few. The vibrancy of my garden relies heavily on pollination. The bright lantana blooms not only bring beauty but also act as a lifeline for pollinators. Without them, my squash and my okras wouldn't thrive. Watching bees hop from marigolds to hibiscus is a reminder that every flower plays a role in the ecosystem. The process of pollination mirrors our efforts as partners. It requires collaboration, patience, and care. By fostering pollination, you're not just growing plants, you're nurturing an ecosystem. Pollination is the magic that turns flowers into fruits and dreams into harvest. By understanding and encouraging this vital process, you can turn your garden into a thriving sanctuary. Which of these tips are you excited to try? Share your pollination stories in the comments below and let's learn from each other. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more gardening tips and insights. This is your girl Dottie from Greener Acres Cardinal Oasis. Gago. 
gardening always, growing on.